we're going to do a little bit of a review of complex numbers. And complex numbers are used quite frequently in signal processing. And although it seems like we're actually making things more complex, in a lot of cases they greatly simplify the type, the, the algebra and the mathematical manipulations that we need to do. So recall that uh, we use comp we define complex numbers in terms of the square root of minus 1. So we're going to call j the square root of minus 1. Now mathematicians typically use the symbol i, but it's more common in engineering to use j. And then I'm going to introduce two real numbers. Let's call a and b the uh, real numbers. And then I can come up with a complex number, which I'll call c, and we'll write that as c is equal to a plus j b. So a is the real part, b is the imaginary part, and the way I've expressed this number, this format is called rectangular coordinates. The other format that we'll use is to write this complex number in what we call polar form. And in that case, we'll have c be equal to r times e to the j phi. And in this case, r is the magnitude of the number, and phi is the phase. And this representation is known as polar coordinates. Now, depending on what kind of operation we're doing with the complex number, it's easier to use rectangular coordinates or polar coordinates. Now before we uh, do a couple operations, let's examine these numbers, these representations, and how to convert between them. So to do that, it's easiest to view them using something called the complex plane where we have the two coordinate axes and the, uh, draw those two axes, the vertical axis is where we'll put the imaginary component of the number and the horizontal axis is where we'll put the real part of the number. So if I'm going to draw the number a plus jb, c equals a plus jb in this plane, I can that's going to be represented by some point where the real um, axis has length a and the coordinate in the imaginary axis is b. Okay, so this is our complex number c. Now I can also represent this number in polar form by looking at the, the uh, magnitude of the number. So let's call the length of this this distance here, we'll call that r, and then I have a phase angle phi that it makes with respect to the positive real axis. Okay, so this is how these two representations describe the complex number c. Now from this and a little bit of trigonometry, we can easily figure out how to go between these two sets of representations depending on what we want to do. So if I give you a and b, then I can determine that r using the Pythagorean theorem, r has to be a squared plus b squared. And similarly, phi is going to be the angle whose tangent is b over a. Going the other direction, we see again from trigonometry that a is going to be r cosine of phi, whereas b it's going to be given by r sine of phi. Now I said that depending on what we want to do with num these complex numbers, it's useful to have either the rectangular coordinate representation or the polar coordinate representation. And it turns out that if we want to add complex numbers or subtract them, that that's best done in rectangular coordinates. But if we want to multiply 
or divide, that's best done in polar coordinates. So let's do an example of adding two numbers and multiplying or dividing two numbers. So we'll come up with, we'll have two complex numbers. Let's write them, let's write C1 to be equal to A1 plus JB1. And we'll also express that in polar form as R1 e to the J V1. And then we'll have another number C2, which we'll write in rectangular coordinates as A2 plus JB2 or in polar form as r2 e to the j v2. So if I want to add c1 and c2, then it turns out that to do that, I simply add the real parts. Okay, and I add the imaginary parts. And you can see that from our graph of in the complex plane, it's just adding two vectors. Okay. Now, if I want to multiply C1 and C2, well, in this case, it's much easier to do that in uh, polar form because of the properties of complex exponentials. So I'm going to have R1 e to the j V1 times R2 e to the j V2. And so the R1 times R2, you can put those two together, and then the exponents, when you multiply exponents, they add. The exponents themselves add. So this can be written as e to the j v1 plus v2. Similarly, let's do just a division, show the form for division. Um, I'm going to have c1 divided by c2 it would be r1 e to the j v1. And let's write this over r2 e to the j v2. And to do this, we just divide the magnitudes, R1 over R2. And the phases now, because of the properties of expo exponents, the phases just end up subtracting. OK, so there's a, that's the basics of uh, addition, multiplication, and division, and so on with complex numbers. Now, there's one new additional thing that I want to introduce here, and that's the idea of complex conjugate. And when we take the conjugate of a number, we replace j by minus j. We flip the sign of the imaginary term. And we'll denote complex conjugate by an asterisk symbol. So if I have c with an asterisk next to it, that means I'm taking the complex conjugate of c. So that's going to be, let's see, let's write it out this way, a plus jb whole thing complex conjugate, and that corresponds to A minus JB, because we just changed the sign of the imaginary part. And similarly, if I write this in polar form, R e to the J phi complex conjugate, what happens is the magnitude is unchanged, but the phase gets, the sign of the phase gets changed. So the, the the uh, j changes its sign. And um, let's just draw that in the complex plane. So here we have our, our real and our imaginary axes. And if I put some number out here, c, then c conjugate, remember, we're going to change the sign of the imaginary part. So c conjugate is going to be down here with um, minus b. So this is going to be c conjugate, complex conjugate. And you can see that as well, uh, this corresponds to leaving the magnitude unchanged. But the phase, here we have phase angle phi with respect to the positive real axis. And here we have minus phi with respect to the positive real axis. Okay, so the, that's the number in its complex conjugate. One interesting property of the complex conjugate is that if I take a number and I multiply it by its own complex conjugate, I end up with, well, let's just do it here. We'll do r e to the j phi times r e to the minus j phi. And you can see that this is just 
the phase angles cancel out because I have phi plus minus phi, which is zero. So this is just r times r, which is r squared. So this number times its complex conjugate gives us the magnitude squared of the number. Okay, so that's a bit of the basics of reviewing complex numbers. We're going to make a lot of use of those as we look in signal processing.